ready to celebrate. <laughs> Folks at home, can we see this at home? All right. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Therese Lefevre, and I am co-chair of Connect and a leader at St. James in Stratford. On behalf of my co-chair, Pastor Anthony Bennett, it is my great honor to welcome you both in person and via Zoom to our 10th anniversary celebration. Tonight is an exciting night in which we will look back at the winds of the past and forward to the vision we hope to become. At this time, I'd like to introduce the co-chairs of this celebration. Pastor Anthony Bennett, pastor of Mount Airy Baptist. <laughs> Reverend Liz Abel, pastor of Cornerstone Community United Methodist Church. Reverend Jack Davidson, pastor of Spring Glen Church. And our Zoom chair is Reverend Chris Barr of St. Paul's Episcopal Church. Together, we will lead you through this evening's agenda. To begin, I'd like to introduce Rabbi Michael Friedman from Temple Israel in Westport who will lead us in our opening prayer. Thank you so much, Therese. Pastor, thank you for welcoming us to your and your congregation's home. On this, the third evening of Hanukkah, we are aware that Hanukkah is normally thought of as a celebration of light and freedom suggest that it is a celebration of power. It's a story of how a small band called the Maccabees, which means hammer, defeated a mighty empire. God fought their fight and judged their cause just. And so on this evening, God, we thank you for the many miracles, for the redemptions, for the mighty deeds and saving acts that you created for our ancestors at this season many years ago. And I hope you will join me, those of you who are familiar with the blessings for lighting our Hanukkah, our Hanukkah menorah, I hope you will join me in the blessings. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kidshanu bemitzvotav, Vetsivanu lehadlikner shel Hanukkah. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, she'asa nisim lavoteinu, bayamihim hahem, bahazman hazeh. We thank you, God, for making our lives holy through the commandments and for commanding us to light these beautiful candles. And we thank you, God, for all of the miracles that you performed for our ancestors and for us at this season in your Namaste. Namaste. You know, Namaste means the divinity in me salutes the divinity in you, whether you are in person or online. Again, we say namaste. namaste. My name is Anthony Bennett, and I'm the pastor of this great house. 
uh, that my co-chair, Therese Lefevre, welcomed you to. I have served this congregation for the past 27 and a half years. Amen. And am honored to be one of the founding co-chairs along with uh, Father Jim Manchin. Tonight, we come to live out the statement couched uh, in the sermon title of that great civil rights pioneer, the Reverend Dr. Otis Moss Jr., who said, we engage in these moments, moments of celebration for years of struggle. And indeed, the sermon title is fitting tonight. It's a fitting caption for the work of Connect. For over a decade, many of our institutions have come together to struggle with issues around power and race and faith and how this intersection of each will help us to organize to build a new Connecticut. And so tonight, we celebrate the struggles that we have had across urban and suburban centers, Catholic and Protestant circles, Islamic and, Jew and, and Jewish communities, Sikh and Unitarian Universalist communities to build relational power. And we have discovered that our power is in our diverse mix. And so tonight, we will hear stories of that struggle, yet also stories that have led to this celebration tonight. For our celebration is framed through the lens, through the lens of the wisdom of the Akan uh, African mythical figure the indinkra symbol of the Sankofa bird. I was blessed to receive this in Ghana while I was there. I was blessed to receive this by a great disciple of this congregation. This is an image of a bird ironically looking back in order to walk forward, holding while they are walking the egg of possibility. Its wisdom teaches us the importance of reflection on the past in order to chart relevant and effective movement in one's present and future. And so tonight, in light of that Sankofa bird, we will look back on our successes, our struggles, our journey to build relational power together, to learn from each other, and to engage in public campaigns that have actually served to create a new Connecticut. We will look back on our formative years as we wrestled with predatory lending in our communities, along with despairing economic conditions from, uh, as a result of the recession of 08, many of our institutions still dealing with. Uh, we need to look back at our meetings in the basements of our various institutions where we honestly wrestled with our cultural and doctrinal differences, yet realize that in order for us to build broad-based power, we needed to understand each other's interest and each other's humanity. And just as in the spirit of the Sankofa bird, as we as individual institutions and collective organizational network, as we seek to respond to this global pandemic with health and vitality, it is of utmost importance that we continue to organize and strategize for an effective organizational network in the year 2022 and beyond. And so I pray 
that tonight you have come to celebrate with us, to reflect on our journey, and to join us in vision casting and organizing for our future. If you're there, give me a big amen. And now, Reverend Curtis Farr will lead us on our roll call. Good evening, everyone. So good to see all of you here. I guess I get to start the roll call tonight, so here we go. My name is Curtis Farr, and I am a leader from St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Fairfield. Tonight, we have seven people here to celebrate 10 years and to commit to many more. Let's hear from some more of our members here tonight. First, Dr. Manette Ferguson. Good evening. I'm Dr. Monette Ferguson, Executive Director for Alliance for Community Empowerment. We're here to celebrate 10 exciting years with Connect. Um, and I am here with five of our staff members. Thank you. And next, Rabbi Ida Paskine. Hi, everyone. I'm Rabbi Ida from Congregation Bethel in Norwalk. And I'm here with at least five members of my congregation. We're excited to celebrate 10 years of Connect with all of you. Congratulations. Thank you. Next, Yolanda Skinner. Good evening, everyone. I am Yolanda Skinner. I'm a leader at Grace Baptist Church. Um, we are two people, and I am here to happily celebrate 10 years of Connect. Happy and congratulations. And next, Simmer Sony. Hi, my name is Simmer Corsoni, and I'm a leader from the Guru Thaik Bahadur G Foundation, which is a Sikh Gurdwara in Norwalk. And tonight we have seven people here to celebrate 10 years and to commit to many more. Reverend Kathleen Mills. Hi, I'm Kathleen Mills. I'm the pastor at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Trumbull. And tonight we have nine people here to celebrate 10 years and to commit to many more. Congratulations, Connect. And next, Angie DeMello. Good evening, everyone. Angie DeMello with St. James in Stratford. Um, I'm just delighted to say 10 years and counting. Uh, we have in the house 10 people from St. James to celebrate this awesome event. Thank you. David Levy. Hi there, it's uh, David Levy. Everyone gets it, 50-50 shot. Um, I am one of the co-leaders at uh, Temple Israel in Westport, here to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Connect with 24 of my colleagues from Temple Israel. And next, Eric Fishman. My name is Eric Fishman. I'm a leader from Temple Shalom in Norwalk. And tonight we have approximately five people here to celebrate 10 years and to commit to many more. Thank you. Wonderful. And next, Pastor Horace Huff. Hello, my name is Horace Huff. As you've heard, I'm pastor of First Baptist Church in Milford, Connecticut. Uh, and I believe we have 14 people my co at to celebrate the 10 year anniversary of Connect. Thank you so much. And now Maureen Lopez. Anniversary. Or maybe Actually, Barbara Katz. Barbara Katz. Okay. Um, I'm Barbara Katz. I'm the leader from New Haven Friends Meeting. And uh, we have approximately 10 people here tonight. And we're very happy to celebrate Connect's 10th anniversary. Wonderful. Meg Heyer. Hi, I'm Meg Heyer from Our Lady of Guadalupe Roman Catholic Parish in New Haven. And we are privileged to have been a founding member 
of Connect. Um, overjoyed to be here on our 10th anniversary, looking forward to whatever is to come. And there are 15 of us here tonight. Wonderful. Wonderful. And next, Carol Wade. Hi, I'm Carol Wade, leader at Shalom United Church of Christ. And we are also a founding member and have uh, enjoyed being part of Connect for 10 years and look forward to the future. We have three people here this evening. Wonderful. And next, Albert May. Hi, my name is Albert May. I'm a leader at St. Raphael Roman Catholic Parish in Milford. We also were one of the founding uh, congregations for Connect, and we have uh, eight people with us here tonight. Wonderful. Thank you. And next, Jenny Barnard. Hi, everybody. I'm Jenny Barnard from the Unitarian Society of New Haven. Uh, we have 23 of us here to celebrate 10 years of Connect tonight. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Jeff Schwartz. Um, hello, I'm Jeff Schwartz from uh, Congregate, Congregation B'nai Israel in Bridgeport. Uh, we're excited to have 15 people here tonight to celebrate 10 years and to look forward to many more. Great. Welcome. Thank you. And Tamara Shockley. Hi, this is Tamara Shockley. I'm a leader from Calvary Baptist Church in Norwalk, Connecticut. I am representing Calvary Baptist Church tonight. And on behalf of Calvary, we'd like to congratulate Connect and we look forward to 10 more years of success. Good, e good evening, everybody. My name is Zane Sayal. I'm a leader from the Bridgeport Islamic Community Center. We are so excited to be here with all of you to celebrate 10 years of, of success for, uh, with Connect, and we should have at least 15 people here from the Bridgeport Islamic Community Center. Good evening, everyone. I'm Deborah Tangrone with Spring Glen Church in Hamden, Connecticut. We're delighted to have 15 of our pairs here to celebrate 10 years of Connect and commit to many more. Hi everyone, I'm Christina Wycliffe from Cornerstone Community Church and I'm here with five other people to celebrate 10 years of Connect. Hi, I'm Tom Flynn. Uh, my faith community is uh, a lady, uh, our St. Anthony of Padua in Fairfield, but I'm here tonight to represent the Council of Churches of uh, Greater Bridgeport. We have uh, 12 people tonight either here or on Zoom, and we wish, we are very happy to congratulate uh, uh, Connect for their 10 year anniversary and for many more. I'm Rita Skog. I'm with First Church Congregational in Fairfield. And uh, we have uh, set eight people here tonight to celebrate 10 years and to commit to the future. Good evening, everyone. My name is Philip Kent. I'm a leader at Congregation Mishkan Israel in Hamden. And we have 15 people here or on Zoom tonight to help connect, celebrate 10 years. And we look forward to more great work uh, together in the future. Hello, everyone. My name is Pearlie Sams Allen, also known as Lulu. And I'm a leader at Mount Airy Baptist Church congregation. Tonight, we have 26 people total on Zoom and here to help us celebrate 10 years and to commit to many more. Good evening, I'm Natasha Kuntz Webster. I'm a leader at Community Baptist Church in New Haven. Tonight we have eight people either here in person or on Zoom and we're here to celebrate and we're excited to celebrate Connect's 10 year anniversary and we commit to working with you for many more. 
My name is Rick Kamietz Case. I'm a leader at St. John's Episcopal Church in Bridgeport, also a founding member of Connect, and we have nine people between here in person and on Zoom ready to celebrate and look forward to many more years of working together. Good evening. My name is Jack O'Melia. I am from St. Jerome Roman Catholic Church in Norwalk. Uh, we are also a founding member of Connect, and we are looking back over 10 great years of wonderful successes, and we're looking forward to even greater successes. And we have, I'm sorry, and we have 14 people in the virtual and real house. Good evening. I'm Cher Balcom, and I am a leader at United Church on the Green in New Haven, and we are the newest members of Connect. We joined, we joined just in time to be able to join you for this grand celebration, and we are so excited to join you on this journey moving forward. There are six of us here on Zoom and in person tonight, and we're really excited. Thank you for the welcome. Wow, let's give it up for our organized people. It really is fantastic to see all of you tonight, whether you are at home on Zoom or here at Mount Airy. It is great to be able to see people who have built this organization for the past 10 years. We are so grateful for our leaders that have built relationships and those that we've not even met yet. Connect is a relational organization. We build our power on the hundreds of one-on-one -on -one relational meetings we conduct every year. As many of you all know, the one-on-one -on -one individual meeting is the basic foundation of why and how we do organizing. For us, it's not really about transaction. It's about building relationship, discovering who that person is, and if there is some common interest that we can pursue together. And so tonight, we're going to practice the one-on-one. -on -one. If you are here in person, we'll ask you to turn to somebody next to you. And if you are on Zoom, you will be put in a breakout room with somebody randomly. You'll be given five minutes to ask, ask the question of the other person, what are you grateful for this year? We want to emphasize that this should be shared listening. So give each person about two and a half minutes to share and, uh, and explore. We know individual meetings take 30, 40 minutes. Do it an abbreviated version tonight. All right, go have fun. Do one on one.
Welcome back. As the rest of the folks start filtering back via Zoom, I'm going to ask you to find your way back to your seats. Nothing like a good one-on-one -on -one to get some energy going in the room, right? <laughs> Tonight, as we celebrate the work of Connect, we recognize the world as it is, but we work for the world as it should be. Though we act publicly, the reasons why we work personal. Tonight, we're going to listen to some of our leaders and what drives all of us to do this work of justice. The great thing uh, about celebrating 10 years is we can be proud of our accomplishment, yet also be reflective of where we can do more organizing. And what I really love about Connect is that we don't shy away from difficult issues, right? So we've won a lot of important victories, but they've been on issues around immigration and the undocumented, around gun violence, around criminal records and criminal justice reform. Understanding that uh, we can do more collectively in many ways than we can just in our own individual institutions. I've seen Connect grow eight years ago from about 18 congregations to today over 37 congregations representing over 30,000 people in both New Haven and Fairfield counties with a staff of one lead organizer and three associate organizers. I have the great opportunity of of being with people of all kinds of faith traditions and we're very much alike in that core belief that God calls us to do justice for others. So CONNECT stands for Congregations Organized for a New Connecticut. It is a collective of primarily religious institutions across race, across religion, across geographical locations for the express purpose of acting in public life. And we believe that the end work of our faith should be justice. It should be a making an impact, a real impact in the lives of our communities and in the lives of those around us. So we do that through organizing and hearing what it is that keeps people up at night. Try to figure out, okay, what is it, where is it that we can make the most impact for our communities? It is the people who pick the politicians, it's not the politicians who pick their voters. 30,000 people across 37 institutions is a substantial base and a substantial mix. I mean, the other thing that's so powerful and different about Connect is that those are 30,000 30, diverse people. We listen to literally hundreds of stories every year. We do house meetings to get an idea of the kinds of issues that are important to our people. And then we look for ways that we can enact change um, for those people. Some of those are in-state tuition for undocumented immigrants. We've had wins in healthcare, keeping insurance companies, instituting major hikes in insurance rates. We have shut down a bar in Hamden for the gun violence that was happening there. We've had very big wins um, that seem extraordinarily important and then little local wins, as little as putting up a sign in front of a, a church so that people don't park there during funerals. So everything from very big to what seems insignificant makes a difference in people's lives. Uh, 
uh, we have just completed a, a great campaign. It's a three-year-long campaign around uh, clean slate legislation. Thank God we finally passed it after, after three years. Uh, but that came up of a result of conversations and relationships that we had uh, in our criminal justice reform team, where we wanted to see that people who had served their time uh, could actually go out and live a full life instead of having to uh, repeatedly live the effects of their crime, right? The clean slate legislation, statewide legislation, one of the most robust now in the country, uh, will give a clear pathway for those who have done particular crimes, have served their time, where they will no longer be hindered from uh, returning to the culture, to the society, and engaging in responsible citizenship. Connect has evolved uh, in that we are probably a more established institution with a track record. And that track record has been we've gotten some wins. Yeah, I feel very proud of, of the work that uh, we've been able to do together and connect over a long period of time on a focused set of goals. Uh, we're a force to be reckoned with for sure. It's changed the way I see politics happening and see public life really working. Really, besides my family, it's really the thing I'm most proud of. This is our thing. Cornel West said, you can't lead the people if you don't love the people. This work has to be rooted and grounded in authentic and genuine relationships. We're called to do those things that are difficult. We're called to do those things that stretch us beyond what we see. And as a man of faith, I've learned to walk by faith and not just by my sight. I guess I'd just really like to emphasize that most of the time when you go into a congregation and you ask people to work on something, on something that seems political, they're hesitant, right? Oh, I don't do politics. I don't do that. But the reality is that everything that happens in our society happens in a public way. And so we need to be able to be, to, to step into that public domain and, and really find our voices and find the strength within us to, to lead in those situations. And Connect trains you to do that. It trains you to step forward as the leader that you're intended to be and work to, to move issues forward. We're offering a redefinition of what it means uh, to have power and to lean into it, to affect good and positive change for our local people and for the nation at large. But be curious and be open. Be willing to share of yourself so that other people will share with you. When we do that by the tens and the hundreds and the thousands, then we build an organization like Connect that has relational power and the ability to act uh, consistently and persistently over time to make real change. This commemoration is like uh, the wisdom offered by the Sankofa bird. The Sankofa bird in Africa offers uh, the wisdom of looking back and ordering the first. And so I believe a part of what we're doing now in, in this moment to pause is to look back at what we've accomplished, where we've been, how we've got here, so that we can move forward uh, as the organization that we are. Thank you to everyone who put together that incredible video. Let's put it together one more time to... So as Therese shared in that, that video, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the aspects of Connect that makes us so unique and so strong is the opportunity to gather together in conversation, to learn from one another. Uh, so all of an opportunity for the next...
minutes or so to eavesdrop into a conversation here uh, between four members of Connect. Uh, we're going to kind of ask one another uh, about what brought to this space, what has become such a part of our lives, uh, and two, uh, in the past years, what has been an area of Connect that's been really impactful or meaningful for each of us. Uh, my name is Rabbi Evan Schultz. Uh, I'm from Congregation. B'nai Israel, uh, this is Rina Aurora, Jose Astorba, Lonnie Spaulding, and each of us will to, uh, to share uh, what brings us here, why, how we got involved in Connect. Excuse me, we can't hear you. Rina Kaur. Can you hear me now? Okay. And uh, I'm from Gurtek Bahadurji Foundation in Norwalk, which is Sikh Gurdwara. And uh, about six years back, Ilana came to us because she knew about me to the Gurdwara. And just somebody said, okay, you have to meet our outreach committee. And that's how we met them. And we talked about and we learned about each other. And I think we really thought it was a wonderful opportunity for us to be involved. And uh, we started talking, having discussions at regional level and at local level. And uh, we, that time, we really felt, especially after 9-11, uh, most of the Sikhs were really facing a lot of hate crimes, hate speeches, and kids were suffering. So we brought that to attention of Connect, and uh, we really worked I personally went to meet even superintendent, police chief, and mayor, and it was lovely to see how they facilitated, and uh, we sat and talked in person that how our kids do suffer at school. And people don't realize when you are going through daily life and there's things happening to you in school and nobody's, you don't feel that somebody's there who can understand you, it affects their mental health. And we decided instead of waiting for some child to suffer again, because we were hearing so many issues happening around uh, different states and schools, we'd rather be proactive. So we took a proactive approach. We met the superintendent. We talked about hate speech and anti-bias culturally. We wanted to do a culturally responsive training and connect came. And we, from Sikh perspective, brought Sikh coalition and they helped us to train. We trained about 800 Norwalk public school teachers and staff member. And that was really a good big deal and it really helped. And teachers and parents came to us and they told us how beneficial it was for teacher and staff to learn about diversity because it was about people of color. It was about kids, Jewish kids. It was about everybody else, not just about Sikhs. So that was wonderful. And men, number of years that I've been here, the, what I love is learning about everybody. Oneness is very big thing for us in Sikhism, but this is where I practice and learn. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jose Ostorba. They hear me? Jose Ostorba, and uh, I am from uh, Our Lady Guadalupe Catholic Church in New Haven. And uh, my first, my first uh, I say, staff, um, public life is uh, way, way back there when. Uh, Padre Jaime, like everybody call him in Spanish, uh, Father Manje, invite me to these house meetings uh, in San Rosa Lima, in New Haven. I also, by that time, I'm a member at the church, but he, in, at the moment, a lot of, lot of leaders, they, uh, they do um, house, house meetings, and I don't even know what's house meetings at that time, but he invited me, and uh, we shared stories, 
And uh, I see something different. I see something different, something beneficial, uh, something like uh, people get compromised and get, you know, moving, rolling, you know, like I say, you know, kids start walking, moving things. And, you know, at the moment, like leaders like Maximo Romero and Cecilio and Jamie, Armando, you know, everybody is involved. And uh, so we hear a lot of stories, and many of those stories are. Uh, from people who uh, be able not be able to get work, to get to work because uh, not be able to get license, not be able to register a car, not be able to buy insurance for the car, and many others they get pulled over and they get arrested, you know, and they pay big fines for that because it's just for the simple thing, no allowed to get a license. So and we start from there. And that's my first, um, my first walk in the public life, and and what I see is uh, I see the chance we can make changes, real changes, in the community, and the community they need it, and everything starts from there. To now, so that stories we we hear there, we borrow. And to, and to connect, and connect, take that issue as a connect issue, and we fight, we fight at state level, and probably many of us, we know the story, we win. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Walton. I'm a little closer, and there's my pastor sitting behind me. Great, wonderful person. I remember ten years. Ago, I started working with Connect. I remember. Uh, in Bass Hall, and we were just talking about different things that affect people in the community and even with ourselves. Lots of stories, lots of stories we heard. Just you two. <laughs> okay. Does that sound better? Thank you. And I mean, uh, just to be able to take a thought into um, with with people and transform it into organized organized thought, organized mind, but to organize it to make a change in the community is astounding to me. Um, when I first. Public, like I am right now. <laughs> um, and over the years, I was able to speak publicly in front of an auditorium of people, on the radio station, pushing the Clean Slate bill. Um, Clean Slate is a bill that was passed through the efforts and the work of a lot of people. Um, a great bill because it's going to change the condition to a lot of people that have been incarcerated, that are coming out, they're trying to find jobs, housing, you know, things that are gonna make their life better. But it started with one thought, one idea, one emotion. Look what it's created. This is, it connects a wonderful organization. 
I mean, you get to see really that when people are able to put down their differences and, and put down things that don't really matter and come together as one, ah, that's powerful. Um, what I also took away from this is that these same things that I learned in Connect about speaking and talking to people has helped me in my business. I communicate more effectively in my business with my customers. I understand and talk to them in ways that I've learned from this organization. So I wanted to say thank you to Connect and that I will do another 10 years. If y'all need me, I'm here. Uh, I'll share just a, um, a brief piece of my personal story, what brings me to this space and actually goes back to when I was eight years old. Uh, I didn't know it was community organizing, uh, but my father actually had this dream of opening an art store uh, and he bought an, a franchise, uh, opened this store and subsequently had been taken advantage of by sort of the corporation that owned these franchises. Uh, and he uh, and my mom around and discovered actually a lot of people who had bought these franchises uh, had uh, lost some of their money, had been taken advantage of, and they organized together. Uh, they sort of created this power um, to take on this corporation. And uh, I didn't know it when I was eight, but when I was uh, older in rabbinical school and took a class on community organizing, I realized I had seen that uh, in action and how powerful that was uh, to see them do that and to gather people together and to hear their stories. Um, and very much that experience as a, as a child has moved me to, uh, to do this work uh, and see the opportunity when we sit together uh, and bring a, um, uh, and craft and create power uh, from our stories and one another. Um, in the 10 years in Connect, uh, in addition to what all of you have shared, the Do Not Stay on Idly By work that we've done has been immensely powerful. Uh, I was very moved by uh, Pastor Bennett, uh, Rabbi Jim Prosnett, I've uh, been doing this work in Connecticut for some years, uh, bringing us together. Uh, and this is very much where the, the faith piece of the faith-based organizing, at least for me, had come in. Uh, these words do not stand idly by. Uh, there's a notion in the, in the Jewish faith that if you save one life, you save an entire world. Uh, and realizing just being able, yeah, if we, with our work, if we could save one life, how powerful that is. Um, and, uh, you know, you realize this is ongoing work to take on uh, major gun corporations, uh, what kind of work that does. But I think back to my parents and um, the little strides that they, they made. Uh, and I'll share just one story. I remember uh, Rabbi Michael Friedman and I, we went to a Sturm Ruger shareholders meeting in Norwalk, which I never imagined I would ever <laughs> find myself there. Uh, and what we... What was so powerful to me was, A, um, you can make little strides. You know, I remember we went there, uh, and Rabbi Friedman presented, and we, we met with um, people from this company, and we walked away saying, okay, we understand a little more. We get a little bit how this, how this works. We understand maybe where we can make inroads here. Maybe we could have a little bit of impact, understanding that this is a long game. Uh, and that, that keeps me going, and hearing these different stories of people and seeing where we can make small little inroads. And having that vision, you know, as you said, Therese, the world as we, we wish it to be. Uh, so that's, that's the motivation. That's what uh, I think drives so many of us to continue to return this place after 10 years. So we are 10 years strong and uh, hoping for many, many years more to come. Uh, so uh, thank you all for uh, sharing your stories tonight and uh, to do with our program. Let's thank these participants again. There are many persons locally and nationally that would want to celebrate with us on tonight. And we want to hear uh, from them. Uh, right now, I believe we have a, a Zoom remarks from Senator Blumenthal. You do indeed. I am All right. All right. so uh, honored and excited to, uh, to be with you and to join you. Even though it's remotely, I really wish I were there to hug. 
Yeah. Many of you, it is just a joyous and wonderful occasion to be celebrating this 10th year on uh, the third night of Hanukkah. Thank you, Rabbi, for your wor words of wisdom. And indeed, if we save one life, we save the world. Connect has saved many, many lives. And I've been proud to work with you side by side. Uh, one, of the, one of the remarks referred to the St. Rose of Lima Church and the efforts on preventing harassment and discrimination against immigrants there. I remember meetings with Connect in the basement of that church brings back very inspiring moments for me. Of course, I worked also with Connect on in-state tuition for undocumented students, the Dreamers, how inspiring that has been. And as Attorney General as well on health insurance rates that were skyrocketing out of control. Connect was there for people, a really basic effort. And of course, year in and year out, gun violence prevention, which has been part of my life's work, part of yours as well. But most inspiring to me has been the people, even more important than the specific causes, your commitment to each other, your dedication to helping each other and other people has really given me the kind of energy and vision that you have really spread throughout Connecticut. So I just am here to say thank you to every one of you for being a part of this effort, which is larger than the sum of its parts. It is truly a historic effort. And I join all of you in hoping that we have the continued, all of us, courage and strength to carry on this fight. Here in Washington, DC, I can tell you right now, you are inspiring me to fight for justice and to make sure that we have a nation worthy of the people whom you are serving, worthy of the American people, and making sure that on all of these causes, we stay strong together. I am so grateful. Thank you so much for all you have done during the years, your help and support to me and the work that I've done as Attorney General, now as your United States Senator. And I look forward to a time when we can hug each other and be together. That's right. That's right. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. Thank you so much. I believe we have also a video message from Senator Murphy. Hello to all my friends uh, in Connect. Congratulations on 10 years. You guys are a force for good, a force for positive change, a mechanism to bring together people um, who, who maybe you know, don't have other natural means to sit in the same room, to be part of the same cause. Connect has provided that opportunity. I'm so grateful for the efforts that we've made together on stemming gun violence. You know, this is an issue that has the ability to bring people together. I know it has a reputation of being controversial, of being a political third rail, but it isn't. In fact, there's broad consensus out there about what we need to do in order to make sure that the right people own guns and that the military style weapons aren't out on the streets in civilian hands. There's work that we can do together to bring people together, to connect people on an issue uh, th that uh, we can win uh, by taking some of the partisanship uh, and the political nature out of it. So it's been great to work with you all for the last 10 years, um, knowing how much success you've already had. Uh, I can't wait to see what's ahead for Connect in the next 10. Thank you. We also have a video message from Governor Lamont. Hi, this is Ned Lamont. I wanted to help celebrate the 10th anniversary of Connect and how important your interfaith organization is. Interfaith means we know what we have in common, what we share, the values that we share in common, and that's what Connect is all about. I love the phrase, we all arrived in America on different ships, but today we're all in the same boat. And I think that's part of the message of Connect as well. I love what you did on the clean slate law. We followed your lead. Uh, faith is often about redemption. And I think you realize that everybody deserves redemption. Everybody deserves that second chance. And that's what you did. And 
after the year, two years of COVID, I think we've realized one thing more than ever. Healthcare is not just a basic right. I need health care for everybody to make sure that you're safe, and that means I am safe. And we made a special effort to make sure that nobody was uh, left behind in any of our underserved communities when it came to testing, when it came to vaccination, when it came to getting your schools open for each and every one of your kids. These are all the values that Connect shares, and that's why I'm very happy to be with you all today. God bless. We also have remarks via Zoom um, from Senator Bob Duff. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for having me and giving me this uh, opportunity to speak uh, live to you. Uh, it really is a pleasure to congratulate Connect on 10 wonderful years. Um, as I said in our, our private uh, chat room a little a while ago, that you all really help us get things done because most people, when they tell an elected official or a politician, uh, you know, you should you should deal with or or address and fill in the blank, and then they kind of just wash their hands and they walk away. Uh, Connect helps us get things done. You don't walk away. You are the army that uh, helps us get up the hill and fights the battles with us and gets the job done. And the work you've done, important. Uh, because it's not easy work, the work on driver's licenses and the work on uh, clean slate and so and gun control and so many of the other issues. These are not easy issues uh, to pass in a legislature and think about all the successes you've had over the last 10 years. Uh, so I'm grateful uh, to have you uh, as, as part of the army of good and change and uh, to get things done and think about where we are as a state. Uh, we saw today in, in Michigan where we had yet another school shooting. And uh, we, have, we have worked to tackle so many gun violence issues here in Connecticut because of the work that you've done. Uh, we, are one of the four, we are the fourth safest state in the nation. And that's because a lot of the work that you did on uh, uh, criminal reform, criminal justice reform, and, and the advocacy that you've done uh, to keep people out of the prison pipeline so that they don't reoffend and that they can have a clean slate. Uh, so all of this is because of the work that you've done and coming together, working together, uh, to make real positive change for people. So thank you. I pledge to work with you another 10 years uh, and work to uh, make our state an even better place uh, for all of us. So thank you again for everything that you do for all the citizens of the state and me personally as a legislator and help us win some of these big battles that we have to win. All right, thank you. Thank you. We also honored to hear via Zoom from Representative Robin Porter. Well, good evening, everyone. And thank you so much for having me. It is a tremendous honor to be with you all on your 10th year anniversary. And I can't tell you how much it excites me to know that out of the 10 years that you've been doing the work, seven and a half with me, I look forward to the years to come because you all have made a tremendous difference and the way we look at policy and how we get this policy done. You have put voices and faces to the issues, the concerns. There is tremendous power and story and you all do a magnificent job of making sure that people know how to testify and relate their stories when they come before us. Boots on the ground, grassroots. This is where the rubber meets the road. And that is what Connect you know, really symbolizes to me. And as a woman of faith, um, a strong believer in the things that I can't see because the things that we're seeing ain't so great. You all help to keep us on track, keep us laser focused on the things that matter and, and, and not to be distracted you know, by the enemy because there really is an evil force out there that is driving this world in the wrong direction. But it's because of organizations like yours, like Connect, that help to keep you know, lawmakers like myself who are uh, women and men of faith, rooted and grounded in that and centered in that and understanding that the work that we do is not about us, that this is bigger than us. This is about doing what is right and what is good for Connecticut and putting us on, a, on the map in a way that sets the tone for the rest of the world. And you all have play, played a critical role in doing that. You are truly a force to be reckoned with 
and you, you, you continue to show us how to walk by faith and not by sight. So I'm looking forward to the years to come. I'm looking forward to the work still to be done. It's already been mentioned, all the, all the criminal justice and racial and ethnic and all the policies that you have helped us on. I'm gonna call you back in the building, hopefully, and if not, via, right. you know, Zoom. That's right. Zoom to help us get that solitary confinement done. We need that Protect Act to be done and signed by the governor. So we're gonna be pushing for that. And I can feel the wind beneath my wings coming from Connect. So thank you all again for what you do. God bless you. And let's keep going. We got all work right. to do. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Porter. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And finally, we will hear from Senator Gary Winfield. Good, e good evening. Y'all made me follow Robin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> listen, um, my history with Connect goes back to a basement uh, on a corner of Shelton Avenue and Division Street in New Haven. Well, Pat Spear was there at the time, so you know how mm -hmm. far back this goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were learning about the house meeting back then. Uh, this organization is amazing. It's impactful. It's been with me much of my legislative career. And in 2018, I'd been working on this thing that became known as the Clean Slate thing way before it was known as Clean Slate. I went into a meeting and Matt was there. And I'm glad only Matt was there and not the rest of you all because I, I had to take off my tie and say some things we didn't want to say. But when I walked out of that meeting, I turned to Matt and I said, I know it doesn't seem like it, but we're going to get this done, whether those people in that room are with us or not. And we got that done this year because of the work of Connect and others. But you all have reminded people not only of the humanity of the people that we're talking about on the wrong end of the clean slate equation, but of their own humanity and what it means to be a human being as you look at those people. And that is critical to moving policy. So I have been so filled by looking out and seeing you all. And you know, we talked this session about the few people that showed up, right? We had the people in the blue shirts who everybody knows, but we also had Connect that were at that building and sometimes being passed by by people in positions like mine. But you kept coming back, you kept per persevering. And it allowed for us to have moments like that time I walked out of the building so filled up by the fact that we passed Clean Slate that it was overflowing and you were there to support me in that uh, and support the members of uh, the Society of Connecticut. So I, I am just, I am grateful for you. You asked for, I'm grateful for you. And if I say nothing else to you, congratulations on 10 years. And thank you for the work you have done. And Robin's right. We got to get that clean slate bill passed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your leadership. We, um, we are just thankful and grateful. Um, I believe is Representative Stephanie Thomas uh, on Zoom. We want to acknowledge I, her. All right, we want to acknowledge Representative Thomas, Representative Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Leeper. We want to acknowledge that. Can you all help me acknowledge them? We want to thank as, as Connect, a broad-based organization, no one person uh, builds that kind of power. It's broad-based. We want to thank our allies, the ACLU of Connecticut, the Greater Hartford Interfaith Action Alliance, I think Senator Tony Wong is here. We acknowledge his presence. And I don't know if you're unmuted, but I'm gonna get you to unmute in a minute. Just, just one second. Um, <clears throat> Sankofa Bird in that spirit and the tradition of this congregation, as we keep pressing forward, we must always uh, um, um, acknowledge um, how we're standing and Connect was Connect before uh, we were Connect officially through sponsoring committee. Um, we just didn't found in 2011. There were years before that, that many conversations with pastors and laypersons in basements happened about what it would be. And I must acknowledge the work of Pat Spear 
and David Carter. I must acknowledge their work. So many others, so many others, so many others. All right. Um, are you all, have you all unmuted? Okay, everybody's unmuted. Let's give one big, one big hurrah. Congratulations. Congratulations. So help help me out here, Pastor Bennett. It was we look back to Move forward. We look back to look forward. Pastor Liz got my back on this. We look back to. We look back to. Help me out online. We move back to. Put that in the chat. We're moving forward. This is the moment we mark that shift. Are you ready to move forward? Yeah. The um, I won't call them old timers. I'll call them long timers chairing the beginning of this, uh, the first part of this meeting tonight, or this assembly. We've got the newbies now, <laughs> taking you home the rest of the way to mark that we have looked back and now we are going to move forward. move forward. What does it look like for us to move forward the next 10 years, the next 10 years, and so on and so forth. Well, we've got some people to help you look at that and understand that and know how to achieve that because we are a movement. It takes action. It takes work together. So we have got Liz Keenan, who is going to help uh, us understand that. And we've got the Reverend Philippe Andal, who is going to give us a clear picture of our strategic planning and our finances. All right, here we go. This past June, about 50 leaders gathered for a strategy retreat. We mourned losses from COVID. We lifted up meaningful moments from the past 10 years, just like we've been doing tonight. We used an assessment tool to identify where Connect stands in our efforts to more fully become an anti-racist organization and named our core values. At the end of that day, leaders volunteered to construct our future direction in an external and internal strategy teams. Pastor Philippe Andal and I co-chaired the internal strategy team initiative. We felt a need to engage in intentional listening with a larger group of leaders before crafting future goals. With support from the executive and strategy teams, eight leaders conducted over 40 one-on-ones to hear what our leaders found meaningful, not helpful, or even harmful in both what we do and how we go about doing it. We also learned what their dreams are for Connect's next 10 years. Several leaders also led small group discussions with over 60 people in our regional meetings. That's a total of 100 people who participated in one-on-ones or small group discussions. <laughs> Want to give a big thanks to Kirk Wesley for his organizing support and a huge thank you to the eight leaders who did the one-on-ones. Kenny Foscu, Meg Heyer, David Levy, Rita Skog, Ian Skogerg, Deborah Tangerone, Cindy Zuckerbrod, and me. <laughs> and if you participated in facilitating or taking notes for the regional meetings, please wave your hand if you're on Zoom. Please stand if you're present so we can give you a big thank you as well. All right, so here is what we heard about what's meaningful. Three big things. Number one, Connect has a heart nurtured in our ways of being with each other. We get to know people from multiple faiths in one-on-ones like tonight. 
We listen to what keeps us up at night, what has us so angry and enraged, and we do that in small groups. We identify our issues together from this listening we do with each other. Number two, Connect has a shared spiritual and social purpose. We live our faith in community through action for the common good. Number three, Connect has an organized way of working. Local trainings, multiple leaders, large assemblies, and issue campaigns. We also heard loud and clear that Connect has been evolving. We invite you now into a call and response with us, affirming Connect's growth and evolution. When I raise my hand, you say, we are evolving. We are evolving. We don't just work on one issue now. We work on multiple issues at local, state, and national levels. We've added more religious denominations to our membership, and we are many races, cultures, and faiths. We are evolving. We've expanded our learning about each other's religions through introduction to faith one-on-ones. Many of our white congregations met in groups for two books, two movies, to learn more about racism. And many people named ways that we can do better lifting up and supporting our leaders of color. We are evolving. Our growth has led some to feel that they only know a small part of what goes on with Connect. Many aren't sure how we identify issues or what Connect's leadership structure is. Some wonder how decisions happen. Is it top down? Is it bottom up? And there's a desire to know and be part of how the decisions are made. We are evolving. We're evolving so much so that we've outgrown several of our practices. What happened to those one-on-ones and how do you do those on Zoom? Some feel a bit of anxiety or a little bit of challenge with the one-on-ones. There's a lot of core teams that really want some help rethinking how Connect shows up in our congregational work. And members are yearning to discover ways to feel more relational power moving forward. We are evolving. Amidst these challenge, as you've heard tonight, many mentioned how powerful it was to win our real data and clean slate campaigns. Many people experience joy, courage, and power going to Hartford, talking to legislators, and publicly sharing their stories. We are evolving. We heard expansive future dreams to be a statewide organization, to address climate issues, and to have youth front and center. We are evolving. To realize those dreams, we heard a need to do internal work so that our Connect culture reflects our diverse racial and religious membership. There is such a deep hunger to more fully realize who we be in how we do this good work. We are evolving. To help us more fully reach our potential, we are so pleased to announce that Connect has been awarded a three-year partnership with Neonu Span and the CEIO organization, a team from co-creating effective and inclusive organizations will work with a core group of our leaders to support our evolution, and then with the rest of the organization in various future gatherings. Yes, Connect, we are evolving. Well, good evening, Connect, and happy 10th anniversary. I am Reverend Philippe Andal, and I have the pleasure of serving as the senior pastor of the Community Baptist Church in New Haven, and I have the privilege of serving as your treasurer for these past three years. But Connect family, tonight, of course, is all about 10. It's about 10 years of organizing, 10 years of power building, 10 years of one-on-ones, 10 years of assemblies, 10 years of strategy team meetings and issue team meetings and executive team meetings and clergy team meetings and breakfast, lunch, and dinner meetings, conference call meetings, Zoom meetings, in-person meetings, and now hybrid meetings. <laughs> 
We're celebrating 10 years of hard conversations. We're celebrating 10 years of deep relationships. We're celebrating 10 years of wins. We're celebrating 10 years of hard fought victories and we are celebrating 10 years of power. You all should know by now, 10 years in, what power is. And that is, if you know it, go ahead and put it on the chat. Help me out, virtual family. Power equals organized people plus organized money. And while it's hard to truly quantify the real impact and change that our common and collective faith values teach us to act toward, one good indicator of impact and change of the many that we've heard tonight is indeed our combined people and money power. Soul family, in 10 years, Connect, we have grown from a dues base of 16 congregations pledging $68,000 to now a dues base of 37 congregations pledging over $122,000. Because of your commitment to your faith, because of your commitment to our relationships, because of your commitment to God's kind of justice, we have quite literally doubled ourselves. But just because we've doubled ourselves numerically, that doesn't mean that we've just doubled our power. Remember, Connect, I'm a preacher first and your treasurer second. And because I'm a preacher first and your treasurer second and I got the mic and I'm in a pulpit, I'm going to take a text real quick, Dr. Benny. And I'm going to remind you that my Bible tells me in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 30, that one can put a thousand to flight but two can put 10,000. So I'm gonna use that faith multiplier and I'll say instead that because we've doubled our numbers, like the Hebrew Bible tells us, Rabbi, on this, our 10th anniversary in 10 years, because we've doubled our numbers, we've multiplied our power by a factor of 10. And if we could do in one decade all that we've done with our multiplied power now, the sky is the limit to what we can have and what we can do in decade two. So thank you, Connect. Thank you for 10 years of not just added, but thank you for 10 years of multiplied power. Somebody ought to say multiplied power on a Tuesday night. Somebody put multiplied power in the chat. Somebody go ahead and put those strong arm emoji reactions on the Zoom screens. It's multiplied power that secured driver's license for immigrants. It's multiplied power that's revoked slices liquor license. It was multiplied power that saved families millions of dollars in health insurance premiums. It's been multiplied power that saved congregations thousands of dollars in the Cooperative Purchasing Alliance. It's been multiplied power that's gotten one of the strongest clean slate legislation uh, passed in this nation. <laughs> I feel like Sunday morning on a Tuesday night. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> because of that, I stand with tiptoe anticipation. What these next 10 years hold for us is we continue to hold each other in power and in relationships. And because we are a powerful people of relationships, we recognize that we cannot and could not have done this alone. So we thank our funders tonight who have greatly and generously contributed faithfully to our work over these past 10 years. So tonight we want to thank the Clean Slate Initiative, the Catholic Campaign for Human Development, the William Casper Graustein Memorial Fund, the Fairfield County Community Foundation, the Connecticut Health Foundation, the Community Foundation for Greater New Haven, and the Albert and Ann Mansfield Family Foundation.
of course, that's just the tip of the iceberg again, and we couldn't have done it also without our friends of Connect. So won't you help me welcome now our friends of Connect co-chairs, Ms. Cindy Zuckerbrod and Mr. Mustafa Hassan. Wow. <laughs> it's so great to hear that our membership dues base is solid and growing. Doesn't Pastor Philippe do a great job for us as treasurer? <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Pastor Philippe, for your leadership. Connect, however, cannot thrive or grow on dues or foundation grants alone. If we hope to keep growing our power by deep Opening our work in our current member congregations and institutions and broadening our work to include more congregations and institutions, then we need to grow our organizing capacity. That takes more than organized money. Excuse me, that takes more organized money, not more than organized money. That takes more organized money. That is why we need your help. Good evening, everybody. Good evening here and via Zoom. Uh, my name is Mustafa Hassan. Um, uh, as the co-chairs of the Friends of Connect, myself and Cindy, it is our individual donor campaign. We are so happy and excited to announce that as of today, we have received $80,545 in contributions. This $80,545 in contributions is towards our goal to receive $150,000 tonight. Yes. This is, of course, for 2021. Okay. To show you our commitment towards Connect, I'd like to announce that 100% of the Connect strategy team members have contributed have fully contributed. Every single person of the strategy team members has made a contribution. Yeah. Now, we invite all of you to consider a contribution as well, right now. It is really, it is really, easy, it is really easy to do. For those of you joining us on Zoom, please click on the, uh, on the link in the chat box. For those who are here uh, in person tonight, please take out your phones and open the link that you see on the screens. I hope we can fulfill our goal. Inshallah, God willing. Thank you so much.
We know we're running a little bit over, but we got about 10 more minutes to celebrate our 10th anniversary. Can you give me 10 more minutes? Now I want to set the scene a little bit for you. 700 people. Who can you remember the last time you were in a room with 700 people unmasked? I remember. <laughs> it was January 2020 in the basement of this very church. The last time I was in this building, there were 700 of us gathered downstairs to celebrate, to invigorate, to report, and to demand commitment from our elected leaders. That night, the governor committed to making Clean Slate happen, and it did. Amen? Amen. Now, for my church, that was our very first time officially as members of Connect. And we were so excited and so thrilled and felt so welcomed and embraced by you all, but it also felt like we were being airdropped to the top of the mountain that you all had just climbed. That work that night, that 700 people began a couple years earlier in 2018 and house meetings where people for the first time heard the stories of how criminal records that should have been expunged were preventing people from re-entering society in unjust ways. We missed that first part of the journey. And we're a little jealous that we didn't get to take on that first part of the journey with you all. We felt like we missed a crucial step of getting to the top of the mountain. And though we were celebrating, helping to get to the top of the mountain, we were excited to be part of the full journey. We heard stories about other campaigns that were also successful that took root years earlier in similar house meetings where you heard stories about uh, immigrant needs for uh, in-state tuition and driver's license. And you heard stories about the pandemics of gun violence and racism, all these things that you heard tonight, the elected leaders name drop as campaigns that we helped make successful, lives that we help change. And so tonight I'm excited to hit that reset button a little bit, to get back to our roots. We have hit, hit the top of the mountain, we have achieved success in so many ways, and we are looking out and seeing all these other mountains, and we want to announce tonight how we are going to move forward. We are going to return to our roots of the small house meetings so that we can rediscover what is happening amongst us, what the needs are amongst us, what the justice concerns are amongst us from a personal, individual level. And so my co-chair, Pastor Liz, is going to lay out how we are going to initiate this small house meeting campaign. Good evening, friends and family. I am Pastor Liz of Cornerstone Community Church in Norwalk, and I joined Connect with my congregation in the middle of 2020 during the pandemic, and it is such a privilege to stand before you tonight to initiate our kickoff for our house meeting campaign. Our day of assembly will be January 27th of 2022. Those of you who did the roll call for your churches and your congregations, I need you to get ready. I need you to get ready. I need you to get ready. ready? Start preparing yourself because tonight is the night that we initiate our house meeting campaigns. You are going to identify how many people you can commit to bringing on that date, January 27th of 20, 
22, did you hear it? January 27th of 2022. That is our kickoff delegates assembly. We expect you to be here with at least, at least, did you hear me go down, right? Yeah. <laughs> at least 200 people. Now we've exceeded that tonight. I dream big, I would like to say more than 200 people. So, are you ready? Did you see the link? I had a whole bunch more to say, but you already have heard it a hundred times tonight. Please take out your devices, log on to menti.com. There's gonna be a slide that will show you the passcode to get on. So those of you who were designated for the roll call, one person from each congregation, we want you to log on to menti.com and put in your commitment. While you're doing that, let me tell you what is going to happen. On the 27th, we are going to start talking about what's going to happen next how we are going to move forward. Our house meetings will identify our next issues. It will identify and engage new leaders. It will build more relationships so that we can build relational power. There will be house meeting facilitator trainings happening during the month of January leading up to our kickoff meeting. In April, at our assembly, we will then hear the reports from your house meetings that will take place in February and March. Kickoff in January, house meetings February and March, April, we will hear initial reports. Was that too fast? <laughs> I want to make sure that you're keeping up. January 27th, we will see you all back. House meetings will start February and March and April. We will hear the initial reports. Will we start to identify and what our priorities will be going forward? And in May, the assembly, we will report back. I see a question up. No? Okay, I talk from the, I talk from the pulpit. I like this conversation. I'm not a Baptist preacher, but I do talk from the pulpit. Amen, amen. Okay, do, is the Mentimeter going? We want to report what our commitment is tonight. I can't see it. I can keep talking, but I don't want to keep you here any longer. When's the next time we're going to see each other on January 27th? And you're going to have how many people here? Over 200. Amen, over 200. How many people did we get so far? Did everybody connect? Did everybody connect? Did everybody connect? We are connected, right? We are connect and we are evolving. I'm looking for a number. <laughs> we can come back to it. <laughs> okay, while the tabulator is still calculating our final number, I'm going to invite the Reverend Iona Smith Enzi from Bethel AME in Bridgeport to give us our closing benediction. And as soon as she is done, we will report our number of committed folks for January 27, 2022. January 27. 2022 is our kickoff delegates assembly. I hope to see you all there. I plan to be here. Is Reverend Smith Enzi on Zoom? She can't unmute. She, got a nod on. she, gave, us a she nod. gave us a nod. Okay. Yeah. There we go. All right, amen. Good evening, everyone. My name is Iona Smith Enzi, and I am the senior pastor of Bethel Annie Church here in the city of Bridgeport, actually the oldest African-American church in the city of Bridgeport. I have been signed on to connect for four and a half years, and I'm signing up for another 10. 
God bless you and God keep you. It is my job to uh, close us out. And uh, tonight I'm going to pray with my eyes open because I've actually written my prayer in order to be deliberate and intentional about what I'm asking God for. Let us pray. God of all seasons, of Christmas, Hanukkah, Ehid al-Fatir, seasons of birth and death, of planting and transplanting, building up and tearing down, seasons of mourning and dancing, seasons of embracing and refraining from embrace, even the season of the coronavirus, Delta and Omicron, seasons of wellness, of disobedience and discipline, of war and peace, keeping and throwing away, a time to speak and a time to be silent, of racism and eracism. To the God of increase, we engage in these moments of celebrating increase, the increase of Abraham's descendants, the increase of love in the world, of <clears throat> traversing big differences into small wins. We thank you for God, we thank you, God, for showing us that military might can be whittled down to only a few strong men and women left standing who can still speak truth to power. We thank you for the increase in vaccines and booster shots and the viability of life. We thank you, O oh God, because you increased our lives today simply by waking us up this morning. And yet we can uh, proclaim that we are 30,000 strong, 37 organizations broad, and $122,000 of organized money. God of love, tonight we thank you for good life, for Mazel Tov and Shalom and Allah Ma'aka, Assalamu Alaikum, for years of love and good life despite unequal years of struggle, for the work of Connect where power and faith connect and at the intersection of each, we will build a new Connecticut for clean slate, for determining that we will not stand idly by, for the power of one-on-ones, for the increase of relational power. Positive change is our prayer tonight. We have come, we have celebrated these 10 years, the increase of success and, and even the increase of strife in our cities and communities. But like Sankofa, we are looking back while we move forward. The increase ultimately for all humanity. So God of love, God of increase, God of power, God of seasons. Tonight, we ask that you would increase our response to strife and injustice by praying for the health and vitality of all who are here assembled tonight and for the generations to come who will continue the work. God bless us all tonight in the name of our God, amen. So I have a strong faith. There it is. But, but I can't read it. <laughs> I was going to say, I have a strong faith, and I know a powerful God, and I know our number exceeds the 200 already. What is the number, Matt? We can't read it from over here. <laughs> I think it's a 1,000. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> If we multiply by 10, <laughs> our initial thought of goal of 200, that gives us what, 20, I don't, I'm not, I'm a yeah. preacher on that, 20,000? 20, 2,000? I like 20,000 better. <laughs> thank, thank you for coming, God bless, good night. Please listen for the music and let the band play. Friends, it's a party, let's go.
Messi. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with the word for song, if I can show somebody that he's strong, then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in If I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be I can help somebody as I pass along. If I can cheer somebody with word for song. If I can show somebody that he is traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. I will do my duty as a good man ought. If I can bring Never living and not be in vain. All my living shall not be in vain. All my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I live in vain, then not be in vain.
Uh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations on your 10th year anniversary. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mahalia sang this one many years ago, and it's something that I used to listen to my mother play, and um, it's sort of one of the many songs that was uh, an emblematic song of the uh, civil rights era, and it's called, I'm Going to Live the Life I Sing About in My Song. A one, a two, a what you gonna do? Oh! I'm gonna live the life I sing about in my song. I'm gonna stand for right and always shun the wrong. If I'm gonna crowd, if I'm alone on the street or in my home, I'm gonna live the life I sing about in my song. Every day, everywhere, on a busy thoroughfare. Folks may watch me, some may spot me, and say I'm foolish, but I don't care. I can sing one thing, then live another. Be a saint by day, and then a devil undercover. I'm gonna live the life I sing about in a song. By day, thank you, Mr. Laura. If by night, I must always walk in the light. Don't mistake me, don't break me, because I want to do what's right. I can't go to church, shout all day Sunday, go work and get drunk and make hell on a Monday. I'm gonna live the life I sing about in my soul.
I think about Amazon. I'm gonna live the life I think about Amazon. I'm gonna live the life I think about. Thank you.